right there. His eyes shall be evil towards his brother. This, this mostly happens within the, the black and the Latino communities in our households. We don't get along with each other. We hate each other. We don't respect each other as brothers. Right, Reed? And towards the wife of his bosom. And toward the wife of his bosom. You see, if you look amongst the black and Latino communities, a lot of time you see single parent homes. You see families without the father figure in those families. You see that? That's a curse that's been put upon us. Now you have the woman left by herself and she's raising the children all on her own. This is a curse that's been put upon us because we refuse to keep God's law, statutes, and commandments. Right? Continue reading. And towards the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. And towards the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. This is why it's a lot of kids right now that don't have a father in their lives. The father is nowhere to be found. You see that? This is why young kids, they have a hard time respecting older men. Because they look at you like, hey, where you been at in my life? Only my mom raised me. You see that? And it's important for the man to be in that child's life, especially a boy. Because how this society is set up is to feminize the men. Right? Uh, yeah, read that. Isaiah 3, 4 through 5. And I will hey, give brother. children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another and everyone by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. So the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, against the ancient right? Our forefathers and our foremothers, right? You can't even tell, it's hard to tell young children what to do. Most children today, it's hard for them to take advice from, from older people. Because, you know, most people wasn't there in their life, in their lifetimes. Right? Let's go to uh, uh, verse 68. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. So this was prophesied way before it even happened. You see that? This is a curse that was prophesied way before slavery actually took place. The transatlantic slave trade. Right, read. By the way whereby I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. For bondmen and bondwomen, we shall be sold into our enemies. And that's exactly what happened. You guys can do your research on your own. Y'all will see during the transatlantic slave trade, when they brought the slaves from, you know, uh, from Africa here to America, we were sold into our enemies. Brother, hey, brother, how you doing? Amigo, my friend. so-called blacks latinos native american indians anyone that partook in the transatlantic slave trade right and fulfilled the curses you are the children of israel brother how you doing brother can i ask you a question uh, i got right i'm waiting for lunch for work man i'm okay, sorry all right, the, the light is red so you still got time right so i'm gonna ask you a question real quick do you believe in god okay so um what's your denomination what is your denomination? Like, what, 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 what religion do you follow? Catholic. Okay. All right. So, um, are you aware that we are to, in order to get salvation, right? You want to make it to the kingdom, correct? Okay. So, in order to make it to the kingdom, we have to keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Now, are you aware that we have to keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments in order to make it into the kingdom? Yeah, I am aware of that. Okay, so um, give me uh, first, um, no, give me um, uh, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 6. Real quick, real quick. 
Because to make it into the kingdom, we have to keep God's law, statutes, and commandments, right? Read that. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 6. And showing mercy unto them. What do you want to That's and show the seventh day. Exodus 20 and verse 9. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, right? Now, what, 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 when is the Sabbath day? Are you familiar with what the Sabbath day is? Okay, so in the, in the uh, you said you're Catholic, right? Yes. So in the Catholic uh, um, denomination, they teach that the Sabbath day is Sunday. Okay, but what, what, uh, 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 Sunday is what day out of the week, out of, out of what week? What day is it out of the week? Sunday. Sunday, that's yeah. the, end, the end of the week. Is it the seventh day? The seventh day, yes. That is incorrect. When you look at the calendar, it will show you that Sunday is the first day of that week. So, so if Sunday, Sunday is the first day, what will be the seventh day? You said what? That I did not know. No, look, look, look. The calendar, right? We have Sunday through Saturday. So if Sunday is the first day of the week, then what will be the seventh day of the week? Saturday. Saturday will be the Sabbath. Saturday is Saturday the Sabbath day, Saturday. which is today. Today, right now, is the Sabbath day. Give me um, Genesis um, 1 and 5. So you learn something. You learn something. So Saturday is the, is the Sabbath day, right? Read. Genesis 1 and 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So days started off in the evening contrary to what the world teaches a new day starts at 12 midnight that's nowhere in the scripture you see that and on top of that um uh, the catholic church they switched the sabbath from saturday to sunday yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually in their law now the question is who gave the the catholic church the authority to switch the sabbath from saturday to sunday that i did not know because that's nowhere in the bible yes, you see that um Give me uh, 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 Amos chapter 8 and verse 5. Because there, there, are, there are components that comes with keeping the Sabbath day, right? Keeping that day holy, right? Yeah, give me Amos chapter 8 and verse 5. Amos chapter 8 and verse 5. Read that. Saying, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn? Right. And the Sabbath. And the what? And the Sabbath. And the Sabbath. Right. Read. That we may set forth wheat, making the abath small, and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit. So that just to show you, they had to, they couldn't work. They couldn't buy or sell or work a job during the Sabbath day. There was like, when will the new moon, which is another Sabbath, be gone and the Sabbath, that way we could, you know, conduct business, right? So they had to wait until the Sabbath was over in order for them to be working. So as us being a child of God, we are not supposed to be working on a Sabbath day. You see that? So what you can do is you can let your boss know that, you know, according to, you know, your religion, because you are religious, right? They should allow you to uh, um, take the Sabbath off, Saturdays off. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know, if they don't, if you if you try fighting it, and at the end of the day, they just won't let you get up, let you uh, take off on Saturday, just find another job. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? No, I get you. We have a lot of opportunities out here. Yeah, I and I'm pretty sure that if you're doing what's right in the eyes of the Lord, He's gonna yeah. bless you with a job that's gonna yeah. allow you to take that day off on Saturday. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, I've been working here for almost seven years. Seven yeah, so you know, okay. I, you know, I never used to work Saturday or Sunday. I okay. just offered, you know. But okay. I know I should have. I have two days off. Okay. Usually Thursdays and Sundays is my day off. But uh, yeah. Okay. All right, man. Make sure you read that. If you have any questions, call the number on there or or send an email. Okay. All right, guys. All, All right, man. All praises. Get a brother a round of applause. So that's the beautiful thing right there. Give me Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Because we are destroyed as a people. You see that? But we have a solution. The Bible is our solution. 
the Bible is what's going to govern us as a people, right? Read that. Joshua 1 and 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt make thy way having good success. We're going to have good success. All we got to do is just follow the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible. You see what I'm saying? Based off, this is the blueprint. You see that? This is the blueprint. With this Bible, we can form our own military. We can create our own... We can create our own government. We can create our own economic structure. Okay, we can form our own military. You see what I'm saying? All we have to do is just follow the Bible. Right, give me um, Psalms 148, verse 19 and 20. Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20. Because this Bible is not given to everybody. That's the thing that we need to understand. This Bible is only for the children of Israel, so-called African-Americans, Latinos, Native Americans scattered abroad. Right? Psalms 140, 47 and verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob and his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Unto Israel. Jacob's name was later on changed into Israel. Yasha'ala in Hebrew. Right? Read. Verse 20. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Read that part again. He hath not dealt so with any nation. The Most High ain't dealing with no other nations out there. If you ain't part of the, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel, the Most High is not dealing with you. Okay, read. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. They have not known them. You see that? This is why when we read the Bible, we get a true understanding. And when they read the Bible, they get a different understanding. Right? They celebrate in the churches. They celebrate Easter. They celebrate Christmas. All these paganistic holidays, which has nothing to do with the Bible. Right? Um, let's get uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ and not after Christ all of these things are rudiments and traditions of men and the rudiments of the world Halloween Christmas Easter Valentine's Day Thanksgiving all of these things are traditions of men it has nothing to do with Christ let's get um uh, first John chapter 1 and verse uh, 5 and 6. You see that? That's the key right there. The key is keep God's laws and commandments. That's how we love God. Because a lot of us say, oh, I love God. You see that? But do y'all know what love is according to, the, according to the Bible? You see? Read that. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5. This then is a message which we have heard of him right. and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not know the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Matter of fact, give me uh, uh, chapter 5 and verse 3. First John chapter 5 and verse 3 For this is the love of God For this is the love of God Because we all say we love God, right? We all say we love God But this is how we love God, right? Read. That we keep His commandments That we what? That we keep His commandments How do you love God? By keeping His commandments That's how we love God, right? Um, give me, uh, uh, continue reading And His commandments are not grievous and his commandments are not grievous. It's not too hard for us to keep the commandments. It shouldn't be a burden for us to keep his law, statutes, and commandments. Let's get um, 2 John, verse 6. 2 John is 6. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that, as you have heard from the beginning, My brother, ye hey. should walk therein. We got. Hey, this the commandments has been spoken since the beginning. You see what I'm saying? Since Adam and Eve was in the garden, the Most High gave them a commandment, 
eat from all of this tree, but the tree of uh, the knowledge of um, good and evil, don't eat from that tree. Simple things. It's not too hard for us, right? Let's get um, let's get uh, Jeremiah chapter um, uh, let's get Jeremiah chapter fifty, verse thirty-three. Jeremiah 15 and 33, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah. The children of Israel, which is the northern kingdom, right? And he had the children of Judah, which is the southern kingdom, right? Read. We're oppressed together. W read that again. We're oppressed together. We are oppressed in our own neighborhoods. You see what I'm saying? By people that come from halfway across the country. You see, you, we look at the um, the gas stations. Gas stations owned by the other nations, right? The East Indians, the Arabians, right? We got liquor stores and donut shops that's owned by these Chinese and these Japanese. And they oppress us. They very rude to us. They overcharge us, you see? And when they make money, they never give anything back. They never do a, a, a fundraising, right? To give back to the people. They take that money and go to their people and empower them, right? Continue reading. And all that took them captive held them fast. They refused to let them go. They refused to let us go. We are still captives here in America, modern day Babylon, okay? And they refused to let us go. We are not free, okay? A lot of us would think that we're free but we are completely controlled. We are still slaves here in America. Okay, won't you, if you don't feel that way, try driving your car, right, without your tags being updated. Try driving a vehicle without a driver license, a valid driver license. Yeah, of Con, try leaving the country without having a passport. You see what I'm saying? But I thought this was a free country. You see that? Uh, bring out that precept. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 17. As for us, our eyes have yet failed for our vain help. Right. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. We have watched for a nation that could not save us. How many of y'all voted for Joe Biden? Hunk your horn if you voted for Joe Biden. A lot of our people voted for Joe Biden and thought that he was going to bring a change to our communities, to, to us as a people. But it's getting worse and worse. Y'all see they bringing back the, um, uh, 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 the protocols for the COVID-19, right? They did lift up the ban for wearing masks and now we got to start wearing masks again. But that's their agenda. Their agenda is to depopulate us. Because when you wear a mask all day, every day, that reduces. When you wear a mask all day, every day, that reduces oxygen intake. They are robbing you from your oxygen. To do what, I? To to kill you. Got a preset. Right, read that. Preset. Psalms 83 and verse 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That's what they're afraid of. They are afraid of us to come together in unity uh, and to be on one accord. So-called African-Americans, Latinos, uh, the no. Native American Indians. What, what go to? Go okay, to they are afraid of that, um, right? Um, let's get, uh, uh, let's get um, James 1 and 1. True nation, Israelite congregation, go to Hey, sister, hey, hey, sister. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question real quick? I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. That's your that's your child right there? Okay. And um is the father around? The baby daddy? Uh yeah, I will work some things out. Okay, okay. So did you know that's been um a curse to us as a people? For the I said uh, I said, look, when you do you believe in God? Yes. Okay, you believe in God. And uh, what is your denomination? You're a Christian, okay. So, you know what Christian means? The word Christian? Uh, yeah. What does it mean? It's, I don't think it's really religion. I think it's just uh, having a relationship with Christ. You said what? I think it's having a relationship with Christ, living for Christ, right? Well, Christ part of it, Christian means a follower of Christ. 
so Christ, he kept the law, statutes, and commandments. You see that? Would you agree that, that Christ kept the law, statutes, and commandments? Okay, so if he kept the law, statutes, and commandments, and us being as Christians, I'm going to say true Christians. You see, we are true Christians. Because, you know, the Christians, they don't really, you know, follow what the Bible says. Right. You see that? Because the Bible has these days that we're supposed to celebrate. Are you aware? Do you guys celebrate that? Do you guys So the new moon is the feast day that takes place on the first day of every month. And we are to keep that being a Christian, right? Read that. Numbers 10 and 10. Also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginnings of your months. In the beginnings of your months, right? Read. Ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings, over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you a memorial, a memorial before your God. Right, so that's new moon. We are, we are to, as Christians, we are to celebrate that feast day on the first day of every other month. No, no, on the first day of every month. Okay, so what, what do you guys celebrate? Uh, what feast day do you guys celebrate? I don't really go to church anymore. Oh, why, why don't you go to church? I grew up in the church. I, I just haven't in a while. Okay. Okay. So, a lot has happened. Well, that's not really a bad thing. Because it's not like the spirit of the Lord is in the churches anyway. Bring it out. You see that? The spirit of the Most High is when the Israelite congregation. You see that? So if you're interested, we're located on 1520 West Florence Avenue. It's right there by um, Florence and Normandy. You see that? We actually have class today at 430. Would you happen to be uh, free or available at 430? Um, I might. I don't know. Okay, do I'm you... I'm going through a, like, I don't remember, like, what I'm supposed to do half the time because I am postpartum pregnant. Okay. I just came from, you know, I'm in bed. Okay, so what, what is your nationality? Uh, I'm Kenyan. Kenyan and American, yeah. So what is your father? He's from Africa. He was born in Nairobi. Nairobi? My father was born in Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah. Okay, okay. um... You gotta, you gotta that. Was he, um... Was he part of the transatlantic slave trade? Was he a descendant of the, of the slaves that partook in the transatlantic slave trade? Okay, so um, if, you, if it happens to be that, then you may be a saint of uh, the children of Israel, right? And we are the chosen ones. See, that's some of the things they didn't teach y'all in the Christian churches. That the so-called blacks, Latinos, Native American Indians, we are the chosen people of God. You see that? Um, give me a Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Watch this, it's out of the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter seven and verse six, right? Read that. Deuteronomy seven and six. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Holy meaning to be set apart. You see, God, he set us apart from all the other people out there in this world. You see that because, you know, uh, um, some of the, um, the philosophies that they may teach is that, oh, we're all one, we're all the same. We all, we're all children of, of God, but that's nowhere in the Bible, right? Uh, uh, read it from the top. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen you to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above what? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. He chose us to be a special people unto himself, above everybody upon the face of the earth you see that so um okay yeah Sorry, he doesn't have sunscreen on i would stay longer but okay. i gotta i gotta I get that way time. i appreciate you taking the time to stand out here and, uh, you and, uh, that uh, up for the that, uh, flyer. yeah can we give her a round of applause okay all praise okay all praise be to the most high that's what it's all about we over here you know, changing, changing lives. You see that because you know, it's a lot of people out there that may have a wrong look upon us and be like, man, what are y'all doing? Y'all just up there on the corner. Y'all just running your mouth. Y'all wasting y'all time. No, we out here changing lives. By the most high, by his word. 
You see that? Um, give me a, let's go to, let's go to the Apocrypha. Um, let's go to 2nd Ezra chapter 6 and verse 54. That's another thing. If you don't have the Apocrypha, your Bible is incomplete. You must have the Apocrypha, right? Just like Christ said, he comes in the volume of the book. Okay, so we're going to read out of out the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. They all coincide with each other. Right, read. Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 54. After these things, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. So Adam was the Lord, right? Adam was the head of all of the creatures out there, right? Read. Of him come we all. Of him come we all. We all come from Adam. You see that? We all come from Adam, right? Read. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before you, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. For whose sake? For our sakes. The Most High made this world for our sakes. You see that? He gave this world to us, children of Israel, so-called African Americans, Latinos, Native Americans. Right, read. As for the other people, as for the other people, right, the Chinese, the Europeans, the East Indians, right, read. Which also come of Adam, although they do come from Adam, right. You have said that they are nothing. That they are what? That they are nothing. That they are nothing. Brother man, hey, what you come through over here? Hey, hey, hear the word of God. You all come through from Adam. But the Most High, he chose us to be separated from all the other people out there. And he said, those other people are nothing. You see that? Continue reading. Thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spit, and have likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falls from a vessel. And now, O Lord, behold these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, these heathens, have been reputed as nothing. They're like the dust of the earth. Well, they're not really dust. You see that? Because they have lack of melanin. You see that? We have that melanin. You see that? Uh, hold that. Get up Genesis chapter 25 and verse 25. Because when y'all read the story in the book of Genesis, Shalom, y'all will see that Isaac, he had twins. He had Esau and Jacob. Now the question is, were they identical twins or were they fraternal? Let's see what the Bible says, right? Read. Genesis 25 and verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord entreated him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And the children struggled together within her. So Rebekah was going through hell during her pregnancy because she saw that these two her two, two of her childs was going back and forth in her womb, in her stomach, right, read? And she said, if it be so, why am I like this? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Two what? Two nations. Two nations, two nationalities are in thy womb, right? And two different manners of people shall- Two different manners of people. You see that? So they weren't identical twins. These are fraternal twins. Right, read. Shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. The elder shall serve the younger. Esau is older than Jacob. Esau is the big brother. You see that? Right, continue reading. Verse 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. Read that part again. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. See, there's no such thing as white people, per se. There's red people. These Europeans aren't really white. And we're not really black. We're different shades of brown, and they are different shades of red. You see that? And that red is that blood showing forth their skin. You see that, read? And they called him Esau. 
Esau is the biblical name of the so-called white race, of the white man today. That's Esau, right? Can we, uh, somebody hold up that sign right there? That's Esau according to the Bible. We are different shades of brown, black people, Latinos, Native Americans. We are dark brown people. You see that? That's Esau right there, right, Reed? And after that came his brother out, and his hand took a hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. Notice how they didn't give a description for Jacob. Why? Because he looked like everyone else. You see that? So it wasn't really odd for them to give a description of Jacob, right, Reed? And Isaac was three score years old when she buried them. So he took on hold. Oh, no, read that part again when he took took on hold. Oh, excuse me. And after that, his brother came out and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. So his hand took on hold Esau's heel. I'm gonna get you a color switch right now. Um, Do you want it or no? Yeah, hold that real quick. And before we get the color scripture, we'll get uh, first Ezra chapter, second Ezra chapter six and nine. We get second Ezra chapter six. Verse 9, Jacob took on hold Esau's heel. Right, read. Second Ezra chapter 69, for Esau is the end of the world. Esau, the so-called white man, is the end of the world. We are living in the last days right now. We're in end time. This world that we're living in is already prophesied to get destroyed. And in order for you to escape, you have to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. Right, read. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. Jacob, the father of the Israelites, he is the beginning of it that follows. So when this world gets destroyed, the children of Israel is going to take over. We're going to establish a new kingdom under the Most High and his son, Yahawashah. Right? Get um, no. uh, Revelations 1, 13. So Jacob was a dark-skinned man. You see that? All of the prophets throughout the scriptures were dark-skinned, melanated people. Contrary to what the world teaches, Christ being a, a white man, you got the angels, the baby angels, being portrayed as white people. That's nowhere in the Bible. Right? Read that. Revelation chapter 1. Matter of fact, get 1 and 1. Revelation 1 and 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revealing of Jesus Christ, right, Reed? Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come back. This is John. This is John the Baptist, right? Brother, how you doing? Brother, can I ask you a question real quick? My man, can I ask you a question? You got some time real quick? Real quick. I want to ask you something. Do you believe in God? Okay, so what is your denomination? Um, elaborate that in a word I can understand more. Okay, so what, what what is your religion? What do you believe in? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta go. I'm sorry. You, 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 gotta, you gotta go to work. Yeah. Okay. Well, unfortunately, according to the to the law, statutes, and commandments, we're not supposed to be working on the Sabbath day. So make sure you read that on your free time. Just check out that flyer and that website right there. Yeah, right? Yeah. So uh, read uh, Revelation chapter one and verse one. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. John, John the Baptist, right? Jump down to verse uh, 13. Okay, not the Baptist. Oh, yeah. uh, verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about with the paps, with a golden girdle. So this is John, he had a vision, right? And he expounding on the vision that he had, right? And he saw what Christ looked like, right? His head and his hairs were white like wool. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Christ had woolly texture hair. You see that? Can somebody hold up a, a, a picture of the, the Jesus Christ right there? Give us not Malachi, not you. Yeah, Matazah. Y'all see that? That is not Christ right there. Christ is not white. Christ is not blanco. Christ is negro. You see that? Read. 
white like wool, his hair, and white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet were like unto fine brass. And his feet, Christ's feet, is like unto fine brass, right? What color is brass? Hey, y'all know what color is brass over there? Y'all know what color, what color is brass? Brass is looking like y'all should buy. <laughs> Color of brass, right, Reed? And like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned in a furnace. So if you put anything in a furnace, what color will that turn into? It's going to turn black. It's going to turn dark. So that just shuts down their whole argument. Their whole their whole philosophy of Christ being a, a white man. You see that? And not just Christ. We got to look at Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was not white. Mary was a dark-skinned female, a woman. You see that? The prophets, they were dark-skinned people. Right? Go to um, Job 30 and 30. Let's see what Job looks like. You see, there's color in the Bible. But now people would try to come and say, oh, you guys are racist. We're just reading what the Bible says. You see that? So we're going to get um, uh, Job. The book of Job, chapter 30 and verse 30. Right? Read that. Job 30 and 30. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burned with heat. His skin is black upon him. So Job was a dark-skinned man. Right? Let's get uh, let's get Moses. Right? Because everybody likes to talk about Moses, right? Let's get Exodus chapter. What's that? Four. Exodus chapter four. Four, or five, and six. Come on, let's get Exodus chapter four and verse five and six. Right? Is that it? Exodus? Oh yeah, yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah. Exodus chapter four, six. verse six and seven. Yeah. Exodus 4 and 6, and the Lord said further unto him, put now thy hand into thy bosom. So the Most High told Moses to put his hand upon his bosom, right? Read. And he put his hand into his bosom. So he put it into his bosom, right? Y'all hearing this? This is Moses. This is the description of Moses right here, right? Read. And when he took it out, and when Moses took out his hand, right, from his bosom, right? Behold, his hand was leprous as snow so moses had turned leprous as snow leprosy or leprous is a skin condition to where it eats up the melanin in your skin right and not just that there are other forms of leprosy where they have boils and all of that other stuff right read and he said put thine hand into thy bosom again now the question is if moses was a white man how can his skin turn from white to white that don't make any sense, huh? So Moses was not a white man. He was a dark-skinned man, right, Reed? And he put his hand into his bosom. So he put his hand back into his bosom, right? And plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. So it turned back into his other flesh. You see that? So Mary, a lot of y'all call it Virgin Mary. She was a dark-skinned woman. Christ was a dark skin. Moses, Job, okay, all the prophets. They were dark skinned people. You see that? Give me um uh Revelations chapter one and verse twenty-six. Bring it out, right? Bring it out. So this is in the last book of the Bible, the Revelations, right? Not chapter one, right? Yeah, chapter Oh, no. Re oh, Revelations uh, 24. No, Revelations chapter 20 and verse 14. Death and hell. Death and hell. 20 and 14. Death and hell. Thrown into the lake of fire. What does it sound like? What does it uh, 22 and 14. Uh, Revelations, right? Revelations 22 and 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, that they may enter through the gates into the city. So this is the last book of the Bible. You see, to all Catholics, to all Christians, Pentecostals, Baptists, all y'all, y'all read the New Testament. 
So this is in the last book, Revelation chapter 21 and verse 14. 22. 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. So we still have to keep his commandments. That's right. The laws and commandments are not done away with. Right, read. For without our dogs. So without our dogs. These are going to be the people that's going to be standing outside of the kingdom. Yep. Right, read. And sorcerers. And sorcerers. Y'all that follow witchcraft and do all that sidekicks and, and the horoscopes. Talk about you a, 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 a Scorpio, you a Libra, you all this and all of that. That has nothing to do with the Bible, right? And whoremongers. And whoremongers. But y'all like to sleep around and being promiscuous, sleeping around with different men and different women. You see, now that, you know, they lift the, uh, the lockdown, and everything is, is almost back to normal. Y'all out there partying, having fun, and fornicating, and doing all type of wickedness. Yep. Right, read? And idolaters. Idolaters, idol worshiping. Okay, because the Ten Commandments, it says we shall have no other God. Bring it out, all right? You see that, read? And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Our people get so butthurt when they hear the truth. You see that? They love to hear lies. It's time for the truth. And the law is the truth. Right? So I'm going to end it with Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Get that real quick. Come on, read that. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So let us hear the conclusion of this whole matter so this whole entire time i've been preaching right i've been you know speaking the word of, uh, of the lord right so what is the conclusion of all of this for those that just showed up that just pulled up right what is the conclusion right read fear god and keep his commandments fear god and keep his commandments that's the whole well i'm, I'm not gonna read it right read it for that is the whole duty of man. So that is the whole duty of man. That's why we were put here on earth, is to keep his law, statutes, and commandments. Right? And with that, I say, Kwam Yasharala.